This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. And I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. As I am taught the Word of God, my life is changed for the better. And I will never be the same again. Amen. Give 12 people a high five and then you may be seated this morning. You may be seated. Pastor, why do you do that? Well, the devil doesn't like it. And I love doing things the devil doesn't like. If you have a Bible, we're going to start off in Luke chapter 6, verse 40. And the message today is a father's love. The nature of Satan is hate and anger. We see it everywhere in 2022, hate and anger. But the nature of Father God is peace and love, and joy. And we see too little, too little of it in 2022. Jesus said in Luke 640, a student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. So if we are going to be fully trained in Christianity, we are going to be like Jesus, and we are going to be like his father, and our father, Father God. And Jesus said in John 13, 34, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This old world out here is really suffering. They're suffering more than at any time in my lifetime. The suicide rate is higher than it's ever been due to the psychological stress of the lockdowns. Doctors report that 20% of all the patients they see have vaccine injuries. Doctors report that 72% of all the patients they are seeing for COVID have been vaccinated. And there are so many people dying from vaccine injuries, insurance companies may very well start to go bankrupt. There's even a shortage of baby formula this is partly due to so many babies dying from best breastfeeding from mothers breastfeeding them after they've been vaccinated. Women are buying more baby formula than normal, <clears throat> so there's a shortage. And now we discover that every state, including Texas, every state except Florida, has pre-ordered the spike protein gene therapy drugs <coughs> to give to children under five years of age. It reminds me of the verse from the Old Testament about Rachel weeping for her children. My friends, the heartache and the sorrow is only beginning. And these are all but the beginning of sorrows Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, 8. Do not lose sight of who you are. We are the light we are the salt. And when people out here are hurting, we have the answer. <coughs> so everywhere you look, there's hate, anger, stress, depression. It's everywhere. It's like we're living in Revelation 12, 12 in real time. Therefore rejoice, you heavens and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea <coughs> because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury 
because he knows his time is short. Hate, anger, stress, depression, it's everywhere. But we are to manifest the nature of our Father, Father God, which is peace and love and joy. Can I get an amen? amen. Now we call 1 Corinthians 13 the love chapter, and it is to be regretted that the translators of the King James Version translated the Greek word agape, charity, when it is the word for love. God's kind of love or the God kind of love. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 16, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. And the Bible says in Romans 5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now, before I get into this message, I'm going to make a hard statement. And if it bothers you, that's your problem, not mine. All of our trouble and our days being hell on earth instead of days of heaven upon the earth is our own making. All of our trouble. And all of our days being hell on earth instead of days of heaven upon the earth is our own making. Because God said through Moses in Deuteronomy eleven twenty six to 28, see, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse, the blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, the curse if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way that I command you today by following other gods which you have not known. And God said through Moses in Deuteronomy 30, verse 15, See, I said before you today, life and prosperity, death and destruction. And God said through Moses in Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 and 20, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that I have said before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him for the Lord is your life. So he says life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. He says, love the Lord your God. He says, listen to his voice. He says, hold fast to him for the Lord is your life. The Lord is your life, not TikTok. The Lord is your life, not Instagram. The Lord is your life, not Facebook. The Lord is your life, not the TV. <coughs> the Lord is your life. So you choose. I said you choose. You get to choose. Now which one do you want, the blessing or the curse? I said which one do you want, the blessing or the curse? Which one do you want, life or death? I said which one do you want, life or death? Which one do you want, days of heaven upon the earth or days of hell upon the earth? Amen. Proverbs 14, 1 says, The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. But did you know men do the same thing? I said men do the same. I don't know how many men I've seen over these. I got how long has it been? 49 years of preaching the gospel. And they had everything going for them and just tear it down. I mean, they had the job, they had the income, they had the house, they had the woman, they had the children, and just tear it down. So Proverbs says, the wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. But men do the exact same thing. The wise man builds his house, but with his own hands, the foolish man tears his house down. You choose. You decide. You decide how you are going to live. You know, uh, one of the men in the church put a game cam at the back of our property. It's amazing. We think we're living in the city. Oh, my gosh. We got a picture of a uh, bobcat. We got a picture of a mountain lion. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And, uh, and we got too many squirrels. I got to get back to <laughs> taking care of that business. But, but all these critters, you know, we've had a problem with birds wanting to build a nest this spring where we didn't want them, and they just keep coming back, just keep coming back, just keep coming back. Squirrels just keep acting squirrely. 
what is it about this? Only man has been given the power to choose. This is an incredible gift of God. Amen. 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 We choose how we think. We choose how we behave. We choose what we do. We decide how we live. This is an incredible gift. So we can have days of heaven upon the earth or we can have days of hell upon the earth. We decide, we choose. Days of heaven upon the earth are days when we are walking in the blessing of the Lord. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 13 and today I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. I don't think in all my life I've done an entire message out of the Amplified Bible, but here we go. 1 Corinthians 13, 1, If I speak with the tongues of men and angels but have not love, agape love, for others growing out of God's love for me, then I have become only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, just an annoying distraction. Now the word for love all through this chapter is the Greek word agape, love, which is God's kind of love or the God kind of love. And when Paul was alive, there were four different words for love in usage in the Greek. Three of the four are in our New Testaments. The one that is not, the first one I'm going to explain is the word eros. We get the, word, the English word erotic from this Greek word eros. Eros was a Greek word used in Paul's day, but it is not in the New Testament. It doesn't have anything to do with Christianity. Why would it be in the New Testament? It refers to sexual love and probably derived its name from the mythical god of love. This love is erotic love. Eros is a love of passion, an overmastering passion that seizes and absorbs itself into the mind. It is a love that is an emotional involvement based on body chemistry. The basic idea of this love is self-satisfaction and self-gratification. Now, if you think this through, you'll realize that when this old world out here uses the word love, generally speaking, they're talking about eros, self-satisfaction, self-gratification. The basic idea is to pleasure oneself. Eros is directed towards another. Though eros is directed toward another, towards another, it actually has the self in mind. This is the kind of love employed when a young man uses a young woman for self-gratification and gets her to do what he wants by saying he loves her. He doesn't love her. He lusts her. You young women need to wake up. I said you young women need to wake up. Any, any young women here unmarried, born again? Let me see your hand. If you're unmarried, you're born again. Well, I came down here. See, I got to say something to let you know daddy's back. <laughs> you're not a toilet. Amen. You're a handmaiden of the Lord. Amen. And you deserve to be treated gently and kindly and with consideration. I always taught my daughter before she got married, anybody that you go on a date with doesn't treat you as nice as me, dump them. Amen. Kindness, courtesy. How about manners? Amen. Amen. This is Eros love. The, another, a second word for love used in Paul's day was storge. Storge, this love has its basis in one's own nature. Storge is a natural affection or a natural obligation. It is a natural movement of the soul for a husband or wife or child or dog. It is a quiet abiding feeling within a man that rests on something close to him and that he feels good about. Now, in the New Testament, storge appears in the noun or verb form with the prefix a, and therefore negates the love and means without this type of love. It is translated in Romans 1.31 and 2 Timothy 3.3 3 as unloving, or in the King James as without natural affection. In Romans 12.2, 
12.10, storge is compounded with the Greek word phileo and is translated devoted or in the King James Version, kindly affectioned. Phileo is the third word used for love in Paul's day in the Greek. And it is the word Jesus used the third time in John 21 when he said, Peter, do you even love me like a friend? The first two times Peter was asked by Jesus, do you love me with agape love, the God kind of love? But the third time Jesus used the word phileo, Peter, do you even love me like a friend? We get the word Philadelphia from this Greek word, which means the city of brotherly love. But, but that didn't mean anything. Don't go there. <laughs> it's kind of not the, brother, the city of brotherly love anymore. It's more like the city of murder or whatever. Agape is the fourth word in the Greek used in Paul's day for love. Agape is the God kind of love. Agape is self, selfless love. See, we use that word, or we mention that word eros. Eros is selfish love. Agape is selfless love. Agape is the Jesus kind of love. In Kenyon's writings, when you read his books, it can throw you a little bit because he talks about agapa, which is the, pro, the plural of agape. Agape love, the God kind of love, makes the home beautiful. I mean, if the Man loves his wife selflessly, and the woman loves her husband selflessly, and the, the, the parents love their children selflessly. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to behold. The God kind of love comes and lives in the home to make it a place of peace and joy because we began this message by saying that the nature of God is peace and joy and love. And listen, that's what our homes ought to be filled with. Our homes ought to be filled with peace and love and joy. Now, I realize, I realize you go out in the world, you know, you interact with the world. There's all kinds of things going, around, going on out there. But I'm saying in our homes, our homes, we are in total control of what's going on in our homes. Amen. So our homes, when, when, when anybody walks into one of our homes, there, there ought to be the presence of Jesus in that place. There ought to be the presence of peace in that place. There ought to be the presence of joy. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, children don't make noise and do what they're doing. Sure they do, but, but there's no screaming. There's no, you know, uh, threatenings. There's no use of the di divorce word. You know, there's no anger. You could, and did you know you can correct a child without anger? You can... You can even spank a child without anger. In fact, we made it a, a discipline in our lives to never discipline a child in anger. If you're angry, wait. Don't discipline them in that, in that moment. Let the anger pass. Then discipline them. Are you hearing me? It's wrong to discipline a child in anger. I could uh, take a side journey on training children, but then I would get off course. But you ought to get James Dobson's book, Dare to Discipline, because now our culture's gone the other way. I mean, just in the last 60 days, we've seen children at t-ball games and children at the hotel where we were staying acting like little Apache Indians, uh, you know, and the parents are totally clueless. So if somebody else's child runs around here like out of control, that's one thing, but your child shouldn't. You ought to love them. You ought to guide them. You ought to train them. <coughs> Amen. Amen. And actually, Jesus said that when a disciple is thoroughly trained, they'll be like their teacher. So when you see a child out of control, you know the parents out of control. Because the child is a, a mirror image of the parent. Amen. I didn't, get, I didn't get very many amens on that. Because some of you want to think, oh my God, I didn't create that. That was my husband. I didn't do that. That was my wife. No, you're both in on it. Amen. You're both culpable. When a man is love ruled and love motivated, he does not shrink back from any sacrifice. This is lost in our culture. 
The whole idea of a man going to a lousy, stinking job he hates to keep a roof over the head of his family and to put food on the table, this is lost in this culture. Manhood is eviscerated in 2022 America. But there's something noble about going to work, something noble about providing for the family, something noble about providing a home for the family. And not every year is a great year, but keep trucking. Not every year is a super prosperous year, but you got to keep trucking. You keep going to work. You provide and you protect. They, they don't want us to be able to protect ourselves. But a man protects his wife and his family. Love made the ugly cross of Christ a beautiful thing. Love made the tomb where Jesus lay a beautiful thing. The word for love all through 1 Corinthians is agape, God's kind of love or the God kind of love. Verse 2, and if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand all mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have all sufficient faith so that I can move mountains but do not have agape love reaching out to others, I am nothing. Verse 3, <clears throat> if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned but do not have agape love, it does me no good at all. Verse 4, agape love endures with patience and serenity. Agape love is kind and thoughtful and is not jealous or envious. Agape love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. Even in recent days, the Lord has... I don't know if you'd say chastised me, instructed me. I don't know what word to use on being kind to people that can never help us or do us any advantage. We shouldn't just be kind to people we know. But even when we come across strangers, it ought to be Jesus in us. It ought to be the Spirit of God in us. Hallelujah. Agape love endures with patience and serenity. A lot of people endure long. King James says endure long. A lot of people endure long. They're just not patient and kind while they do it. They endure long because they have to. But agape love endures long and is patient and kind while it is enduring long. Now, when you go out to eat after lunch and you're sitting in a restaurant on Father's Day and they take forever to bring you your drinks or to take your order, remember that. Amen. <laughs> to endure long and to be patient and kind while you're doing it. Amen. Amen. Now, there's ways around these things. I remember Austin and I took a, uh, there was no quick way to get from Rome to Where's the Ferrari factory? Marinella. So we hired a driver in a car, and this guy, he was a hoot. And so we're in this Mercedes, and every so often he'd stop. I didn't realize, but in Italy, on these expressways, at every gas station, there's an espresso bar. And so he'd pull over, and he'd get two espressos. <laughs> And then he'd drive faster. <laughs> and, and then about an hour later, he'd pull over, he'd get two espressos, and then he'd drive faster. So I, I told him, I said, look, brother, I said, if you'll slow down, I'll give you $100. <laughs> so, you know, you don't have to be unkind. You can bribe them. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I'm telling you what, he was moving. A lot of people endure long, but they're just not kind and patient while they do it. Then in verse 4, it says, Agape love is not jealous or envious. <clears throat> love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. <laughs> and we need to be careful. The book of Deuteronomy specifically warns us about taking credit for the blessings of God upon us. We just saw what happened a couple of years back to a big braggart. 
When you are a braggart, you are inviting trouble. And when the blessings of the Lord come upon you and the blessings of the Lord overwhelm you, give the credit, the glory, and the honor to God. Amen. And don't be a braggart. Amen. Love never is envious. Never boil, love never boils over with jealousy. Love is not boastful or vainglorious. Love does not display itself haughtily. Love is not conceited, arrogant, or inflated with pride. Something really wrong, I tell you what, with the antenna of God's people, that somebody who's a braggart and somebody who is prideful and someone who is vainglorious garners all this <coughs> adoration of God's people. It is unchrist like I mean, think about it. Jesus could raise the dead, but he didn't brag about it. Elijah and Elisha could raise the dead, but they didn't brag about it. We give the credit, the glory, and the honor to God. I, call, I used to call it up at I-30, deflect. When someone wants to brag on us, deflect. The glory, the credit, and the honor to God. Give God the credit. If you'll do this, then you'll, learn to, you'll, you'll be able to live in safety while you prosper. Verse 5, it, agape love is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It, agape love does not take into account a wrong endured. You know, one of our favorite movies is The Quiet Man, and I forgot the character's name. He became uh, John Wayne's brother-in-law in the movie, and he, he had a list. He had a little book, and he had a list and when somebody did him wrong, he'd write their name in the book, and then he'd strike a line through it. He kept a list. And a lot of God's people are like that. They don't have a notebook, but it's a mental thing. Somebody did him wrong, and they're holding it against them. <coughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying we go back for a second helping, but we have to avoid this thing of trying to pay people back. And I discovered when I was a young man that if I would refrain from taking matters into my own hands and give a matter to God and tell God you handle that any way you see fit, that it would get handled and my hands were clean. Amen. But the Lord does not want us living a lifestyle of getting back at people. It's not Christ-like, it's not God-like. Love is not rude or unmannerly. Love does not act unbecomingly. Love God's love in us. Say it out loud. God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way. Love God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For love, God's love in us is not self-seeking. See, self-seeking love is that eros love. I'm going to act like I love you to see what I get out of you. Now I realize, I do, that I'm an unusual cat. When my, uh, when my dad passed away, my mom was going to this church, and it was a typical charismatic church. And uh, they had a pretty good crowd, but it didn't strike me as being sober. And so we're at the wake, and my mom... God bless her. She was, uh, she lived half, to, half her life in fantasy land. And uh, so she kept telling me that, that he must have given his life to the Lord before he died. Well, I told her, I, I just try and help people as best I can and not be unkind, but yet deal in truth. And I said, well, mom, exactly how would he have done that if he died in a hotel room with some other woman? You know, I mean, where, where would the time be for him to repent and give his life to Jesus? My dad never carried less than $500 on him. I, I was with him once. He bought a washer and dryer <clears throat> cash. He never carried less than $500 on him. When the Kentucky State Trooper found him, he had $40 on him. So what would that be like? See, that's why I just stay home with Pastor Sue. I mean, what would that be like? What would that be like? You're laying in bed, you're having a heart attack, and your last image is some woman going through your wallet fishing and you're in you're you're in the throes of death
So anyway, uh, well, surely he gave his life to the Lord before he went. Uh, I don't see that, Mom. Sorry. So we're at this wake, and her pastors were there. And so she, I wasn't listening to her. So she thought, well, she just rehearsed this on them. And so she's saying, you know, surely he must have given his life to the Lord before he died. And so the pastor and his wife, oh, yes, Nellie, I'm sure he did. Absolutely. And the, and the pastor's wife hugged my mom, looked over her shoulder, and winked at us. See, that's not agape love. See, if I want to use you, I'll tell you what you want to hear. But if I want to help you, I'll tell you the truth. Now, I might put some bow on it and some ribbon, and I might dilute it a little, but it's going to be the truth. Amen. Can you see that? Yes. Tell your neighbor, it's Father's Day. This is a daddy message. So your wife comes home with all of her hair chopped off. What do you think? Well, the Bible says, speak the truth in love. And so, you know, I would say, well, it's different. <laughs> you know, so we have to navigate these waters. When a child doesn't do well in a race, or a child doesn't do well in a, in a test. We're to speak the truth, but we're to speak the truth in love. Try and help people, but we're not helping anybody. Our culture, don't you see, everybody's into fantasy. Even the liberal Bill Meyer sees this, that when he was nine years old, he wanted to be a pirate. And he said, thank God his parents didn't take him uh, to a doctor to have his eye poked out <laughs> and uh, to take, have a leg taken off so he could wear a peg leg and an eye patch. <laughs> but our, our society is into make-believe. And a father is simply not going to raise his children to be a fantasy indulger. I mean, there's got to be some reality dealt with. Somebody has to have a job. Somebody's got to make the money. Somebody's got to pay the bills. Somebody's got to cut the grass. Somebody's got to pay to have the grass cut. Amen? But while we're, while we're dealing with the truth, we can say it in love. We can be loving. We can be kind. I like to ask myself, what's the motivation behind everything? If I'm trying to win people to Jesus, if I'm trying to help people pull ahead in life, see, I, I like to check my motivations. And you have no idea how blessed you are Because we are just as interested in your success and your prosperity as we are in our own. And that's not true everywhere. I'm talking about this agape love, this God kind of love, this Father God kind of love, this Jesus kind of love. Love, God's love in us, takes no account of an evil done to it. Love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. When I was a young man, uh, I, I, didn't, uh, I was not a doer of the word here. But I, I have grown into it. Amen, I just have learned to ignore stuff. The ultimate example of this is Jesus on the cross when he said, Father, they know not what they do. If they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't do it. But they know not what they do. Verse 6, it, agape love does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love does not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness, but love rejoices when right and truth prevail. Verse 7, 
Love bears all things regardless of what comes, believes all things looking for the best in each one, hopes all things remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. Say it out loud, without weakening. Without weakening. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. <coughs> Love is ever ready to believe the worst of everyone. Is that what it says? It doesn't say that. Then how come people are doing that? Love is ever ready to believe the worst of everyone. Hey, have you heard about so-and-so? Have you heard what he did? Have you heard what she did? No. Love is ever ready to believe the best of everyone. And I can believe the best of everybody and not let them into my house. I've learned in my life that a lot of times I believe the best of people from a distance. Amen. God bless them. And don't curse them. We'll get to that. Verse 8, agape love never fails. It never fades out or ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for the gift of special knowledge, it'll pass away. Love, faith, hope, and love, the chapter ends. Love is the greatest of all of these. Why? Well, there's coming a time we won't need faith. We'll be, in the, we'll be in the city of God. We'll be on the streets of gold. The time is coming. We won't need hope. What, would we, what in the world would we hope for? But love will endure forever. Love will endure forever. Love will endure forever. We will go to the temple of God, and we will worship God, and we will love God, and God will love us, and we'll be there with our brothers and our sisters in the Lord, and we will love them. You know what heaven is? Heaven is the place where the haters aren't. There'll be no crime in heaven. Love's hopes are faithless under all circumstances, and love endures everything without weakening. Love, that is God's love in us, never fails. Love, that is God's love in us, never comes to an end. This is God's definition of love. This is divine love. This is the God kind of love. This is agape love, the love of God in us or the God kind of love. For the Bible says in Romans 5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Natural human love is fickle. Natural human love is selfish. Natural human love wants its own way all the time. You ask any police officer, the most dangerous call they ever get is a domestic disturbance. Human love can turn to hate overnight. But we're not talking about natural human love. We're talking about this agape God kind of love. Natural human love wants its way all the time. Natural human love will turn to hatred overnight. But you can readily see that this God kind of love, agape love, this God, this love of God in us is not a natural human love. It is the kind of love Jesus spoke about in John 15, 12. My commandment is this, love each other as I have loved you. How did he love us? Oh man, with patience, with forbearance, with grace, with mercy. He is long-suffering toward us. How many of you are grateful that God is long-suffering toward us? You can readily see in this message this morning that we haven't walked in love nearly as much as we thought we did. Kenneth Hagin used to say every step out of love is a step into sin. You cannot walk in health and healing if you entertain unforgiveness or grudges in your heart. You see, if we are not following the singular command of the New Testament to walk in love, then we don't have a right to walk in the blessing of the Lord. If we're not following the singular command of the New Testament to walk in love, then we don't have a right to days of heaven upon the earth. <coughs> I've learned a secret a lot of you haven't learned, and that is this. I can be generous on every occasion, and God will make it up to me. I can walk in love on every occasion, and God will make it up to me. If we are not following the singular command of the New Testament to walk in love, then we have created our own mess, and we are walking in days of hell upon the earth, and it's our own doing. I said it's our own doing. We ought to believe the best of everyone. Shout it out loud. Love, love. believes the best, believes the best. of everyone. So you can readily see that if we're not walking in love, then we're not keeping Jesus' commandment of love. And I understand, I do. Some people, you got to love them from a distance. 
You know, a relative texted my daughter about meeting up. She texted me, what do you think about that? I said, well, sweetie, you, you do whatever you want to do, but I wouldn't do that. But I said, bless them. Amen, bless them. Amen. Some people you can love from a distance. Amen. And when, they, when it comes to your mind, even if they've done you wrong, just say, Father, bless them. I bless them in Jesus' name. If you do that, you keep your hands clean and you keep your heart clean and you can go before the Lord and you're not condemned. Don't harbor grudges in your heart. Don't harbor unforgiveness in your heart. If you don't know what to say about somebody, say, God bless them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even, even this president, oh my gosh, what, what a train wreck. But oh my gosh, that wife he has. What wife would allow her husband to fall off bicycles, chase ice cream trucks, and be managed by the Easter Bunny for notoriety and fame and fortune and power. So, <laughs> I can't believe I'm speaking kindly toward him. But he's got some real rascals around him. I mean, but that's, that's natural human love is userdom. They use each other to get what they want. Agape love doesn't do that. Amen. Although I do understand chasing ice cream trucks. <laughs> Jesus said in John 15, 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And if we're not keeping his commandment to walk in love, then we don't have a right for our days to be days of heaven upon the earth. If we're not keeping this one New Testament commandment, Jesus' singular commandment, then we don't have a right to his blessings. A lot of people have trouble with this when it comes to money. I don't know about you, but I want to get over to where the blessing of the Lord comes out, and I want to stay right there. I've always pictured it like a faucet. I want to get to where the blessing of the Lord comes out and I want to stay right there. And this just doesn't, this doesn't just happen to lay people. Just in my lifetime, how many ministers have I seen fall because they refuse to walk in love? They refuse to stop talking about other ministers. They refuse to do right by other ministers and guest speakers financially. They refuse to honor their word and do what they said they would do financially. A man's word is his bond. Now, I'm not talking about a punk. A man's word is his bond. And when you give somebody your word, make it come to pass even if it hurts. That's what the Bible says. It'll teach you to not give your word willy-nilly. A lot of people, a lot of lay people, even a lot of ministers have brought themselves under the curse unknowingly. A lot of people, a lot of lay people, a lot of ministers have brought themselves under the curse unknowingly, unconsciously. They didn't even know what they did to get themselves under the curse. Wake up and stay with the blessing. Tell your neighbor, wake up and stay with the blessing. <clears throat> and let's just decide right now to keep our mouths off God's people. Let's just decide right now to not rip off our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's just decide right now to make our word come to pass to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to pray for people rather than talk about people. We need to bless other people in our prayer time and not talk about people. And I'll tell you right now, if you want to live in health, walk in health, if you want to live long on the earth and prosper, you will learn to keep your tongue from evil. Let me say that again. If you want to walk in health and if you want to live long on the earth and prosper, you will learn to keep your tongue from evil. 1 Peter 3.10, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips, that they speak no guile. This is from Psalm 34.12-14. Whoever of you desires life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Say it out loud. God, love, God's love is in us. Say it again. Love, God's love is in us. 
You know why we don't let it out? Fear. This person did me wrong. If I'm, if I'm kind to them, they'll do me wrong again. This person didn't do a good job. If I'm generous with them, they'll take advantage of me again. Listen, I have learned a great lesson. And there are people here, and you need to learn this lesson, that whatever I turn loose of financially to be a blessing to somebody else, my great Father God makes it up to me. And even if I make a mistake in generosity, God still makes it up to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I was uh, horrified. I was appalled. Tiff Shuttlesworth spent his whole life preaching the gospel all over the world. And when he came here on a Sunday morning, his offering was bigger on a Sunday morning, just a Sunday morning than any offering he'd ever received anywhere. He told us a story, I won't mention the name of the place. He spoke there from Sunday to Wednesday night. Thousands of people, thousands of people, thousands of people. Multiple services on Sunday. And the pastor took an offering for him every service. And when he was done, the <clears throat> pastor gave him $400. People, lay people, God's ministers, they bring themselves under a curse. Listen, if you... If you don't want to live under the curse, don't mishandle money. And don't lie to people, and don't lie to people about money. Tell them I'm going to do thus and so, and then not do it. Make your word come to pass. See, this is not a boy's message. This is a Father's Day message. You know, I took a group, I think it was 14 guys skiing. We were there the whole week, Jackson Hole. We did a men's retreat. There was another pastor on the same jet, and uh, we get to uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We're waiting on the luggage, and this pastor meanders over, and he says, what do you got going here? I said, well, it's a men's retreat. I think there were 14 guys. He said, well, how many days are you here? I said, we're here all week. He said, well, isn't that kind of expensive? You know, this is not Colorado. This is Jackson Hole. You're here all week. I said, look, brother, this is not a boys' retreat. This is a men's retreat. So some messages are for men, and this is one of them. Say it out loud, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. But see, you gotta let the love of God out because your, your natural human self will want, you spit on me and I'll spit on you. Your natural human self will wanna pay people back. Love, God's love in us is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Verse 9, for we know in part, we prophesy in part, for our knowledge is fragmentary and incomplete. Verse 10, but when that which is complete and perfect comes, that which is incomplete and partial will pass away. Verse 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. You just can't live like a child, like it's all about you, and be upset and throw a tantrum because your ice cream cone fell out of the cone. Your ice cream fell out of the cone. You know, I've got seven grandchildren, and it's interesting watching them. They're all these different ages, and they all, they're all at different stages of development. They're children, they're children, they're children. But when you are grown up, <laughs> you ought to stop acting like a child. The whole world is not about, how, about, not about you. And let me tell you what, pop psychology, humanist psychology has just wrecked Western civilization because I got some news for you also. Life is not about how you feel. Amen. God, I, I have walked with this God 61 years and prayed to him and not one time has he ever asked me how I felt. Amen. Not one time. So apparently he's not interested. Say it out loud, life, life is, more is more than how I feel. We got married, I got a job in a factory, I hated it. But I had to provide. I got laid off there, I got a job downtown selling uh, watches at Edison's, that's gone now. They, they laid me off, they went out. See, they, you, you don't let me, lay me off, amen. <laughs> the factory went out. I hated it. I hated riding the bus. I hated it, but I did it because I had to provide. I got laid off there, went to work at Zales selling jewelry. I didn't like that, but I did it. 
I'm sure when Sue worked at Penny, she didn't like that. When she worked at Paxton Lumber Company, she didn't like that. You do what you got to do. You change those diapers, and oh my gosh, can they smell. How can such a precious, beautiful little baby make such a stinky mess? Verse 12, for now, in this time of imperfection, we see in a mirror dimly a blurred reflection, a riddle, an enigma. But then when the time of perfection comes, we will see reality face to face. Now I know in part, just in fragments, but then I will know fully just as I have been known fully by God. And verse 13, and now there remain faith, abiding trust in God and his promises, hope, confident expectation of eternal salvation, agape love, unselfish love for others growing out of God's love for me. These three, the choicest graces, but the greatest of these is agape love. And I realize that in this time frame right here, right now, there's a lot going on. I realize that the Antichrist is going to be revealed soon. I realize that we live in a culture of lies. It's all lies. The word of God is true and everything else is a lie. I realize when you read the news, I walked into the lobby of the hotel we were staying at a couple weeks back. He said, we got the paper today. I said, is there any good news in it? He said, no. I said, well, I don't want to read it. Amen. If I want good news, I'll go to the word of God. Amen. It's all bad. I realize all of that. But let me tell you what. We have got to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. And we have got to be like a horse with blinders on. And we got to do a whole lot of ignoring of a lot of stuff going on out here. Amen. And we've got to provide for our family. We got to protect our family. We got to take care of our family. Amen. Amen. We got to protect our children. We got to provide for our children. We got to lead them, guide them, train them in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. And don't trust your family to anybody. And don't trust your children. To this world because I'm telling you what man they have turned this month of June into some kind of a psych freak show and they are want, they're coming after your children amen and so we have to make that money got to provide for our wife got to provide for our children got to protect the wife got to protect the children amen I got these cute pictures from tech Christina her her and the girls at a fair. And I said, well, isn't that the county fair that you're not allowed to go to? My son-in-law is the assistant chief of police in Ozark, Missouri. And when they first got married, Sue wanted to go, Christina wanted to go to the county fair. He said, well, you, you can't go to the county fair. He said, I arrested half of those people. And, uh, and so, but, so now, now she's texting me pictures. I said, isn't that county fair you're not allowed to go to? She said, yeah. But she said, it's different now because the police have a tent. And Derek says, I can go if, if me and the girls stay in the tent. <laughs> See, that's a guy. You can go, but you are going to be where the popo are hanging out. In other words, you can go, you can see it from a distance, but you can't really get involved. This is, this is manhood. To provide, to protect to lay his life down. I completely don't understand what happened in Uvalde, Texas. If I had been there myself, I'd have rushed in. And I'm just a preacher. I do not understand what has happened to manhood, womanhood, and childhood in these United States. But here at Faith Christian Center, we're just staying with the Bible, doing it the Bible way. Hallelujah. 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 Men are men. Women are women. Children are children. Children aren't to be messed with. Amen. 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 They deserve every day as a child because they're going to have enough time to deal with adult stuff later on. Why don't we stand? Everybody standing, I want to give an opportunity for you to make your commitments and decisions for the Lord this morning. Now, I realize this is a different kind of a message, but you know, it's Father's Day and we want to bring a message that might be meat for men, not Captain Crunch for weirdos. Let's bow our heads. I want to, I want to win some men to Jesus right here. Men. 
there are men here this morning and you, you're kind of rough. You know, you're kind of like rough around the edges. And Satan has told you that Christianity isn't for you. But I'll tell you, I got some, I got some rough dudes in this church. And they may be rough and they may be rugged. And they, they, I, I'll tell you, there, there are some dangerous people here this morning. But they got saved. They got born again. I want you to know you can be a man and a Christian simultaneously. Let me run that by again. You can be a man and a Christian simultaneously. Simultaneously, You don't have to act like a girl to be a Christian. I dare anybody to endure what Jesus endured on that cross. That was an act of manhood. You may be here this morning and you're not saved. You're not born again. You're not living for God. Now, you've been around church. You've been in church. You got, maybe you got your name on a roll somewhere, but that doesn't make you a Christian. Jesus said in John 3, you must be born again. He said in Revelation 3, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. If you have not prayed this prayer, I want to give you that opportunity right now. If you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior personally and individually, if you have not confessed your sins to Father God and ask his forgiveness in the name of Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity right now to be saved, to be born again. Because, brothers, the days are short. We are right at the precipice of the consummation of the ages. Anybody with any common sense sees it. Things are are not going to go on the way they're going. Women, youngsters can get on, in on this invitation, but it's Father's Day, so I'm talking to the men. But if you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior of your life individually and personally, and you'd like to do so this morning, and you'd like to be included in this prayer, I want you to lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. Pray for me. I want... I want to enter into this covenant of love with Father God. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up. Lift it up high enough to where I can see it. There may be others here this morning. You're backslidden. You're not living for the Lord like you know you should. You're not living for the Lord like you once did. Since you gave your life to Jesus some way, somehow, you've allowed the pleasures of this world or old relationships or old connections to pull you back into the former lifestyle and you're not living for the Lord like you once did. The word says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many this morning would say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. I'm backslidden. I'm away from God, but I don't want to remain in a backslidden condition. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. Well, Father, I thank you for your word. It is an incorruptible seed. It has gone forth into the hearts of the hearers and it will not return to you empty or void, but will accomplish what you desire and achieve the purpose for which you've sent it. I want to speak to those that may be watching online. You can pray this prayer. In fact, everybody in the room, let's pray this prayer out loud together for the sake of those online. Say it out loud. Father God, Father God I give you my life. In times gone by, I've gone my own way. I've lived for self. I've done my own thing. But I turn and I repent from that old way of living and I give you my life. I believe in my heart that Father God raised Jesus from the dead and I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord. And I thank you, Father God, for forgiving me, receiving me, not rejecting me, but receiving me into your family. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you can write to us at, you can go to fccarlington.com slash salvation and let us know about your commitment and decision. We'd love to send you a Bible and my book, God's Very Own Child, to be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Why don't we lift our hands and say, thank you, Father God, because you loved us selflessly, not for what you could get out of us, but you wanted a relationship with us. And it is glorious, it is marvelous, it is wonderful in our eyes. Hallelujah. Well, give the Lord a shout of victory, amen. Hallelujah.